This is the BBC. This podcast is supported by advertising outside the UK. BBC Sounds. Music. Why are there two modes of the thinking? Why do we have these two different thinking modes? The answer may be related to two major problems that vertebrates have had in staying alive and passing their genes on to their offspring. A bird, for example, needs to focus carefully so it can pick up tiny pieces of grain as it pecks the ground, ground for food, and at the same time, it must um, it must scan the horizon for uh, predators such as a hawks. What's the best way to carry out those two very different tasks? Split things up, of course. You can have one hemisphere of the brain more oriented towards uh, focused attention needed to pick at the hood and the other oriented towards scanning the horizon for danger. When each hemisphere tends, to, tends towards a, a particular type of uh, perception, it may increase the chance of survival. If you watch birds, they will first peck and then pause to scan the horizon, almost as if they are alternating between the focused and diffused modes. In humans, we see a similar s- splitting of the brain functions. The left side of the brain is somewhat more associated with careful, focused attention. It also seems more specialized for hand- handling s- sequential information and logical thinking. The first step leads to the second step, and so on. The light, se- the light seems more tied to diffuse scanning of the environment and interacting with other people and seems more associated with processing emotions. It also is, it also, uh, is linked with handling simultaneous big picture processing. The slight difference in the in the hemisphere gives us a sense of why two different pro- processing modes may have arisen. But be wary of the idea that some people are left brain or right brain dominant. Research indicates that it's it's imp- simply not true. Really. Instead, it is clear that uh, the both hemispheres are involved in the focused as well as diffused modes of thinking. To learn about and be creative in math and science, we need to strengthen the use of both the focused and diffused modes. Sure. Uh, please look at the diagram. Okay. Here is a quick example that gives a sense of the difference between the focused and the diffused thinking. If you are given two, ta- if you are given two triangles to put together into a square shape, it's easy to do, as shown on the left. If you are given two more triangles and told to fo- form a square, your first tendency is to enormously put them together to form a rectangle, as shown in the middle. This is because you've already laid down a focused mode pattern that you have a tendency to follow. It takes an intuitive, diffuse leap to realize that you need to completely uh, uh, rearrange the pieces if you want to form another square, as shown on the light. Right, okay. is hugely philosophical, massively self-aware, and talking about the way that he actually is a part of the lives of everybody who becomes his client, and how, what a huge... Evidence suggests that to grapple with a difficult problem, we must first put hard, focused mode effort into it. We learned that in the grade school. Here is the interesting part. The diffuse mode is also often an important part of problem solving, especially when the problem is difficult. Yes. But as long as we are con- con- consciously focusing on the problem, we are blocking the diffuse mode. What an irony! What an irony! Embrace uh, uh, bef- befuddlement. Befuddlement is a healthy part of the learning process. 
when students approach a problem and don't know how to do it, they will often decide they are no good at the subject. Brighter students in particular can have difficulty, difficulty in this way. Their breathing, their, their, their breathing through high school leaves them no, no reason to think that being confused is normal and necessary. But the learning process is all about working your way out of confusion. Articulating your question is 80% of the battle. By the time you figure out what's confusing, you are likely to have answered the question yourself. Kinis R. Leopold, Distinguished Teaching Professor, Department of the Chemistry, University of Minnesota. Oh, please look at the diagram now. Okay. There is a, a winner at the ping pong only if the ball is able to go back and forth. Yes. <laughs> what an analogy. There is a there is a winner at the ping pong only if the ball is able to go back and forth. Meaning, go is diffuse mode, uh, force is a uh, uh, focus focus mode, right? The bottom line is that a problem solving in any discipline often involves an exchange between the two fundamentally different modes. One mode, will process in, one mode will process the information it receives and then send the result back to the other, other mode. This boring of information back and forth as the brain works its way toward the conscious solutions appears essential for understanding and solving all but trivial problems and concepts. Hmm, I see. The idea, uh, the idea presented here are extremely helpful, helpful for understanding, uh, understanding the learning in math and science. But math is uh, abstract, science is uh, concrete, right? So math is quality, science is uh, a quantity, right? Math is y value, uh, science is x value. But as you are probably beginning to see, they can be just as helpful for many other subjects create uh, for any other subject areas such areas such as a language, music, and creative writing. Now you try. Please look at the diagram. Here is a cognitive exercise that can help you feel the shift from focus to diffuse mode. See whether you can form a new triangle that points down by moving only three coins. When you relax your mind, releasing your attention and focusing on nothing in particular, the solution can most easily come to you. You should know that some children get this exercise instantly, instantly while some highly intelligent professors finally just give up. To, to answer this question, it helps to summon your inner child. The solution for this challenge and for all the now you try challenges in the book can be found in the, the endonauts. Endonauts, yeah, okay. Thank you. Reading to find out what happens next. And I just thought that was such a brilliant encapsulation of, of one way of looking at the world. And it's a